This is way. Do you actually wear? Do you actually wear a hat for the interview? Do you actually wear it like that? A hat? I can't. I can't find no hats to fit my head, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. Do you actually wear a hat in the interview? Yeah, you look good. Uh, yeah, leave that on. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. All like that. There you go. You got it. That's it. Like that. Uh, That's just, it. <laughs> like this. All right. This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky we're joined by once again Buddy McGurk. So, thank you very much for coming on, Buddy. It's good to see you again, mate. How you been? Yeah, I've been all right right now. Right now, it's nice weather in England for once. What about you? Is it good weather over in the States? Everything, I mean, everything is good. You know, as good as it's going, as good as it could be right about now. Yeah, I know. So I want to come over to the States one day. Hey, make up your mind with the hat, man. You're going to put it backwards or forward. <laughs> I want to come over to the States one day because uh, there's loads of boxing over there. I know there's a lot of boxing over in the UK, but then in the States, you've got the Mayor Gym, you've got the um the ten goose gym we've got loads of gyms wild card um but how are things of you and your gym in vegas everything is great i can't i can't complain and i saw recently on instagram i was on instagram a couple of days ago and i saw you recently partnered up with Cameron smith how did that come around um when i was in england with uh Chisora, uh paul smith gave me a call and asked me can i come over to liverpool and Talk with him and his brother, and I went over, trained them for a couple of days, and here we are. And I remember you saying in an interview recently that you've been in the gym with Callum since Monday, and now it's Friday. What have you learned in that time about Callum? I mean, you know, we really just really getting used to each other, getting the vibe, you know, and uh, just working on small things, nothing major. And for Callum, I mean, last time, I think he's mentioned this before, but I can't remember what he said. Is he going to be moving up weight to light heavyweight? Because I was a lot of people were saying before that at uh, that, weight, was struggling at that weight, trying to make it the whole time. That I can't answer. You would have to speak to him about that. I can't answer that. Okay, I understand. And obviously, Callum, he's a he's a fighting champion. Champion. He's going to want to be back in the title picture. How many fights do you foresee him having before he fights in a major big fight? Great. Hey, can you hold on one second? This is my daughter calling me. I got to tell her I call her back. Yeah, it's fine. Take your time. No problem. Hey. Hey, I'm doing an interview. I'm going to call you back. Be careful. Bye. Sorry about that. No, don't worry. That hurts me a lot. My mom calls me up. Um, yeah, so how many fights do you think Callum's going to have before he fights in a, a major big fight at the way he'll be choosing it? You know what? I, I mean, I really, I'm going to leave that up to his promoter, his manager. You know, I don't get in. I mean, whatever they say, we get it done. Okay. And, I mean, I remember talking to you about the Chisora fight. I remember you saying that you hadn't watched much of Derek Chisora. And I was re saw an interview with you recently, I think it was on Boxing Social, and you were saying that you haven't watched much of Callum Smith. You've only seen him in, like, one of a fight. Um. Which I always find a bit odd. How much do you know about Callum Smith now? What type of style do you really think he'll be developing? I mean, he has the ability to be a boxer puncher. Um, you know, he can, you know, he's very athletic. You know, believe it or not, he moves very well. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of things, a lot of things you can do with him to, to, uh, to improve and make him better. And I remember sitting in an interview as well, and you were saying that he listens, which is a really key part of a fighter. Callum Smith has one of his best attributes that he listens the whole time. How important is it that a fighter listens to their coach the whole time? I think, you know, it's like a kid in school when you listen to the teacher. You know, I mean, when you get to the test, it's much easier if you pay attention. But if you're not paying attention when you get to the test, you're looking at the teacher for help, but it's too late then. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like the revision in the school was a training and the test is the big fight. Um, I want to move up a few weight classes. I'll hopefully get to speak to Karen Smith soon, but... I want to move up a few weight classes. I remember watching an interview with you and Fight Hype, which is a big combat sports channel in the US. And you said, I've got a quote here, it's about the Wilder and Fury matchup, number three of trilogy, that Wilder is burning a lot of unnecessary energy mentally. What do you mean by that? He's focusing on wanting to hurt Fury, you know, wanting to knock him out, wanting to prove to the world that, you know, that the second time was a fluke. Don't wait. Save that energy. Save that energy for fight night. You know what I mean? He should be focusing on more of how can he 
make this fight easier than it was the last two times. Not going out there and making it a war. For what? He has the ability to make it an easier fight. And I think he should focus on his good his, his attributes that work in his favor. Okay. I remember you also said after that that you also, yourself, you've rebuilt guys when they come back from such a tough loss or you've rebuilt them up to be a great fighter again, for example, would be Arturo Gatti. How would you get, how, is, how did you think the world gets on, back on track after such a tough loss to Fury the second time around? I think Wilder um, needs to go back to the drawing board, back to the basics. And then everything else will fall in place. And he did that with Malik Scott. What do you, what do you think about his partnership with Malik Scott? I mean, uh, listen, I love Malik, and I'm happy for him that, he, um, that he's got the job. Malik was trained by Harold Knight, who was an old-school guy. So I'm, I hope Malik takes some of that, what he learned from Harold Knight, and transform it into Deontay. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and, um, and hopefully that, that'll work, that combination will work. And what I find really kind of odd about the partnership, I would say, I went on box record, I went on Malik Scott's record, and Wilder had previously knocked him out. Do you think there's any like, awkwardness there that Wilder had beaten up his trainer beforehand? Nah, not at all. Sometimes that relationship can make it closer. And why is that? Because, you know, I mean, uh, it's a respect thing. I respect you for wanting to take the job to train me after we, I beat you. And then you tell the guy, I respect you for bringing me aboard after beating me. So, you know, it goes both ways. But I think that over the years, they've developed a very good friendship. So if they can take that friendship and put their minds together and worry about winning and not killing, then it'll be a different ball game. Oh, OK. That's quite I hadn't really thought about it that way. That's quite an interesting way to think of it. And just one last point I wanted to touch on after our last interview. I always thought, oh, I should have mentioned this. And you're in Archie Gatti's corner when he fought Floyd Merver. What was that fight like to be around? And after each round, when Archie got back to the corner, what were you telling him? Well, you know, to be honest with you, uh, the hype and everything was great. But once the bell rang, I mean, you see it. So there's nothing to really say. You see what Floyd did. So the key at that point was to try to save Arturo. So when he was coming out of the corner, what are you telling? What were you, what advice would you give? Were you giving him? What were you telling? You him? know, to be honest, I really don't remember. You know what I mean? I couldn't really tell you at this point. You know what I mean? But uh, no matter what I told him that night, it wouldn't have helped. And Floyd was on fire that night. Yeah, he certainly was. Where would you rank Floyd in the greatest of all time for pound for pound list? You don't want to know that answer. Why not? It's, it's not in the top ten. I can tell you that. Oh wow! Really? Not in top ten all the time? No. Not at all. And why is that? There's too many great fighters before him. So who do you think, obviously it's quite hard now to name the top 10, but who do you think are the top five greatest fighters of all time? I mean, you got Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis, Ezra Charles, Jersey Joe Walcott, Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard. You know what I mean? Those, Sugar Ray Leonard was phew, unbelievable. What I mean, you- Sugar Ray Leonard, not only was Sugar Ray Leonard a great fighter, Sugar Ray Leonard was mean, man. He was mean in that ring, man. What do you like about him so much? How, how was he so mean in the ring? He just had that instinct. He had that killer instinct, man, and, and that instinct to want to be the best. And, uh, you know, he took on all challenges, Ray, and uh, he made adjustments well. I mean, Ray could do it all, man. So, do you think, but where would you rank Floyd then in the top 20 then? I got to think on that one. Call me next week, I'll give you. <laughs> I'll send you a message next week. All right, buddy, that's great. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate All right. it. Thank you.